What's up everyone, welcome to the second part of antivirus series and in today's episode I'm gonna show you a new feature which is real-time monitoring and some major changes that I made to the GUI. But before you go any further make sure you watch part 1 when I show you how antivirus engine detects malware. And I want to say a quick thank you for all the positive comments and feedback, it really helps me and the channel grow, so thank you. Let's start by explaining what real-time monitoring means in our exact case. And the answer is fairly simple. This function monitors directories specified by the user for any changes. So if it detects a change in a file or a new file appears, it will point a scanning engine to that file and check if it's malicious or not. Of course, Windows Defender and its real-time protection feature offers more options like network inspection or behavioral analysis, but let's keep it simple for now. We will move to the more advanced topics later in this series. Okay, so without further ado, let's hop into the code itself. And first thing you can see is that we are passing uh, a parameter to our main function. This parameter, which is called pathList, will uh, contain a list of directories that we want to monitor divided by a semicolon. So it's gonna be directory, semicolon, directory, semicolon, directory, and so on and so on. This is because we want to then tokenize it. We're gonna tokenize it by this character, by a semicolon, so we can get uh, each of the directories separately. And then we're gonna use them to create a thread. As you can see with this while loop, we're gonna create a separate thread for each directory so that we can uh, monitor them separately, sort of. This approach is called multi-threading and you create thread with a create thread function, of course. You pass here monitor directory thread function, which performs the monitoring itself, and you give an argument of token, which is a single directory. Once we create thread for every directory that we specified, we then use this do while loop to uh, make our process wait for the uh, queue character that will terminate it. So with uh, main function described, let's go to monitor thread directory. Now with this one, I was a little surprised because I thought it's gonna be far more complicated than that. But I found this function, redirectory change w, which does pretty much all the job uh, for me. So le let me show you how this works. First, we have to get a handle to our directory and we do it with create file A. We've specified file flag backup semantics. It's very important that you specify this flag so that you get a handle to a directory, not some file. And we uh, pass as a parameter, of course, directory path, generic read, File share, uh, file share read, file share write, all of those other, uh, all of those other flags. Open existing, which is very important, so that uh, this function will only work when the directory actually exists. We don't want to create any new uh, stuff. We want to open an existing directory. Uh, yeah. Then we make a simple if statement, so that if uh, something goes wrong here, we get this uh, notification. And here is where the magic happens. So uh, we want to monitor it constantly. We want it to be almost an infinite. We want it to be an infinite loop until we terminate the the process, the real time monitoring option. Until we turn it off, we want it to be running indefinitely. So while true, infinite while loop. Read directory changes. This is the first function that we call and. This function does pretty much all the work for us. Let me show you. Uh, this is the Microsoft documentation that I show you in almost every video. Uh, what this uh, function does, retrieves information that describes the changes within the specified directory. Okay, now, what information, you may ask? Well, whatever you want, to be honest. File notify change file name. This is a flag that we'll be specifying later. Any file name change in the watch directory or subtree causes a change notification wait operation to return. Changes include renaming, creating, or deleting file. What does it mean? Basically, if someone creates a file in the directory that we specified, this function will, uh, will trigger the, the change notification. 
So let's say you specify a downloads folder, a downloads directory. Well, anytime you download a file, you make change to this directory, you trigger this function. So it basically means that anytime you download a file, a function will trigger detection on this file. Isn't this cool? And check, you can uh, do far more. You can monitor change file, uh, change size. You can monitor last write, which we are go going to do. Uh, any change to the last write time of files in the watch directory or subtree causes the change notification wait operation to return. Basically, if you, let's say you take a notepad and you make a change to a simple text file. So instead of ABC, you write ABCD and save it. It will trigger this function because you made a change to the, uh, to the file itself, right? I hope it's clear. Uh, let me show you the parameters as the last thing. It takes a handle to the directory, a buffer that will hold this uh, notify, this notification uh, in form of a file notify, notify information structure, but we're gonna get to this in a second. A buffer length, a watched subtree in second, notify filter, which are these uh, flags that I showed you. And let's talk about the rest of the uh, flags here. All right, uh, so handle to the directory, buffer that we create here, size of the buffer, of course. Uh, here you pass true, file notify, change file name, and file notify, or, sorry, this, or file notify, change last write, bytes return to the D word, and null, null on the two last. Now, file notify information. This structure will hold this uh, notification. And what is inside this structure? By the way, you can, for every this structure, you can hold control and left click to go to uh, its definition. As you can see, it holds the D word next entry offset action. But the most important stuff, file name and file name length of the file that triggered the notification because we want to return the path to this file as the result of this uh, monitoring function. And then of course, pass this path to our detection engine, but it's gonna be in a second. For this notification, first we save in this uh, structure uh, output from our buffer, right? And then we work on the retrieving the full path itself. First, we need to convert white char to multibyte string. What does it mean? So basically, this file name is in form of a white char, which is encoding either UTF-16 or UTF-32, if I think I'm correct. And multibyte string, which is encoding UTF-8, which is uh, what we are pretty much working mostly, mostly all the time. It is the most popular, if I, I think I can say this and we need to convert it so it works in the next functions. Uh, yeah, so we need file name in, in UTF-8, basically. So we do it like this. Uh, we save file name in this w white char, w char variable with mem copy, so file name, a pointer uh, file, and this is a sort of a, how can I explain this? Uh, the file notify info is a pointer to this structure. So you can't really directly go p file notify info dot file name. You need to use this arrow symbol. Okay, so file name and with file name file name length. So we save it here. File name p file notification info again file name length divided by size of a w char. And uh, this is the null byte char mb file name, which is multibyte, which is our UTF-8. So we declare this variable and we uh, use wc stomps function to convert uh, file name in w char to mb file name in char. And this takes these three parameters, right? I think it is pretty, pretty clear. Then we construct a full path. Once we have uh, a directory path and a file name, we can basically 
put it together, right? And uh, we need to put this double slash, double backslash uh, between them. So it's gonna be like a directory double backslash file name. You could do either double backslash or one forward slash. It's up to you. Uh, I stick to this convention because I'm using double backslash here. Um, okay. And then we are printing the full path to the screen and we use call detection engine function to call the detection engine. So let me show you uh, this real quick. It's pretty simple. Uh, it basically builds a command using a sprintf function again. This is a path to engine.exe, the engine that uh, I showed you in the previous video, in part one. And as you remember, it takes one parameter, which is file path. And uh, yeah, this is the file path that we just built. And then we use a system, system uh, function to call to run this command that we just built. So for instance, you could just uh, imagine this command to be what you would paste to the PowerShell to run the engine. So we do the same, but inside the code. And it will create a sub process with engine.exe inside. It will run this engine code and it will take the output and print it to our screen. Uh, I hope this is clear. So let me show you this in action. I have this, uh, I have this for debugging, so I don't have to use UI. All right, let's run it. Is it working? Yeah, it is. Okay, so let me minimize this, minimize this, and let's create a new file. Boom. As you can see, change detection uh, in file this call detection scan finished no malware let me change the name to aaa enter another change detected and uh, yeah change detected in this there is no file such new text document.txt so error getting file status but there is a file aaa.txt and separate detection uh, was called for it scan finished also when I edit the content of the AAA file, let's say, uh, I don't know, subscribe. Why don't you subscribe? You might as well. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's say you hit save and detection called because we changed the, uh, we changed the data inside this file. Okay, so now let me show you the upgraded version of the GUI. As you can see, it's completely different. We have this home page now with real-time monitoring logs. Uh, they, they will be displayed here. We have a menu on the left side with home panel, file upload panel, directory upload, and real-time monitoring, the completely new thing. Uh, this left menu button, I found uh, how to do it. I found a tutorial on YouTube on how to do it. Uh, let me show you real quick. Which one is it? I think it's here. Uh, yeah, so menu is just a new frame and we have this four buttons that are executing uh, show root, show file upload page, show directory upload page and show RTM upload page. Root is this home page. Uh, and each of these functions just, for example, let's say file upload. It uh, packs to the screen a file upload page and it forgets all the other elements. So, you know, it's like switches between uh, what it wants to display. Same for this, show directory upload. The only thing that it packs is the directory upload page and everything else is unpacked, sort of. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, what's, what else, what else? Uh, RTM page, let's look at this. We have a label, of course. Wait, uh, this. We have a label here. We have a button, enable, disable, that that uh, starts and stops our RTM engine. We have uh, this entry that we can place directories and add it to the list of directories that we want to monitor. As you can see, this semicolon is added automatically. 
uh, automatically on the left. Uh, let me delete it. Oh, by the way, we have this out delete button. And uh, yeah, that's it for this page. Uh, this toggle switch function that's uh, run, that's executed by the, uh, the enable disable button is here. It executes, when you switch it to enable, it executes the uh, engine. And when you switch it to disable, it kills the engine process, the RTM engine process. Now, execute engine RTM. Uh, this function right now uh, looks like this. It's based off execute engine that I also had to change because remember we previously we waited for engine.exe to finish and then we were displaying the STD out. We can't do this with execute engine RTM because it never finishes, sort of. Uh, we want it to be able to, we want it to run in the background infinitely until we specifically uh, turn this off. Uh, I hope it's clear. So uh, we do this thing with a while true loop that immediately when uh, there is an output from standard output stream, we just uh, insert it to output text RTM which is this place here. And there's this clear button that can uh, clear whatever text uh, is displayed. Okay, uh, now one more thing is that we need to do it uh, using threading because we want to be able to use this app. And if you do a while loop, an infinite while loop, um, it would uh, it would make the other things unusable. Uh, so you need a separate thread so that in one thread an app can exist and in other thread the reading mechanism can exist. I hope it's I hope it's clear. Uh, yeah. So one more thing. One more thing that I can show you. No, I think it's I, sh I think I showed you all. Let's uh, let's just test it. Uh, let me open process hacker because I want to show you all these processes being enabled and disabled. As you can see, there is no sub process currently under python.exe, which is this GUI. But when I, I put a directory here, let's go with users myang desktop like this. Let's add it and hit enable there is a new process engine RTM running in the background of, uh, of Python.exe uh, GUI. What does it mean? It means that our uh, real-time monitoring is working. Let's, uh, let's check this out. Again, let's create a new text document and let me uh, zoom it for you. Uh, look at Look here, look what's under rtm.exe. When I open up, a new, when I create a new document, a process spawns engine.exe, it scans a document and then it disappears. Which is uh, very cool because you can actually see that uh, rtm uh, engine calls engine.exe and once uh, it's done, it kills it. Now, when you you can clear this output, by the way. When you uh, are done with real-time monitoring and you disable it, again, look here, engine.rtm subprocess will disappear because of this uh, kill function here, process rtm.kill. Uh, again, all this code, both GUI and the, uh, and the engine rtm, are in my GitHub, link in the description. And that's it for this video. Thanks for sticking till the end. Hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, if you have any ideas or feedback, leave it in the comments below and see you soon.